You have to tell me why it's so important for it to say hello. Hollywood, they made computer scary things. See how this reminds you of a friendly face? But the disc slot is a goofy grin. It's warm and it's playful and it needs to say hello. It needs to say hello because it can. Hello, React Native developers. I hope you are well. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. A little known fact is that Skia engineer Carrie Clark also worked on QuickDraw, which powered the computer graphics from the original Macintosh. And in this video, I would like to show you a simple and efficient way to go from a linear gradient that follows a straight line to a gradient that follows a Skia path. So let's have a look. We take our path. We choose a delta value in points and ask the position on the path for every delta. The lower the delta, the more fidelity the path will have. From there, we can interpolate the points color based on its relative length. And it performs very well with Skia. And with this method, instead of using a linear interpolation, we can build other effects, such as a discrete color selection. Now I would like to show you an easy optimization for this process. Consider the following path. These are the points we compute along the way. But as you can see here, the points along the straight lines feel useless. What you see on the left is actually what we really need. To only get the points we need, I found a great recipe from Steve Rotensberg course on rendering algorithm at UC San Diego. We draw a line between the first and the last point of the path. We get the line's middle position and the path's middle position. How far apart are these two points from each other? If they are far, we split the path in two and start the process again. If the point is close enough, we draw it. This allows us to save the number of points we need to draw. There is, of course, a case where the line's middle point matches perfectly the path's middle point, but hardly describes the actual path. And as mentioned in Steve Rotenberg's slides, there are efficient ways to deal with such edge case. Now, let's dig in into the implementation. We are into VS Code here, and I have a boilerplate project which you can download from the video description in case you want to code along. And I have the path here as an SVG path notation, which I want to apply the gradient along the path. So I have the gradient along path component. And I have a prepare function, which will prepare the data that we need to display the gradient along path. So we're going to return the original path, the length of the path, and the lines that we need to draw. And a line also contains the paint object, which may contain a color or a linear gradient that we need to apply to the line. So, and I have the progress animation value here. So I have a loop animation value. In fact, we can go, oops, here. And I can apply, so trim the path with the progress value. So from zero to one. And of course here we're using a fill. So we need to use a pen style of stroke. And let's say, I think I have a stroke width value. So that looks good. We need to scale the path, of course. And we get the source. So the bounding box of the path is the source. The destination, we can pick the canva. So we have the width and height here. And we have a function that will fit the, that will calculate the transformation matrix that will fit the path perfectly. So the source is path compute tight bounds. And the destination, I'm going to create a rectangle, 0, 0 with height. And I think in this file, so here I have a couple of helper functions. So this fit rec will return a matrix that gives us the proper scaling for the path. We have the get point, get point at length. So we're going to need to calculate between two points positions along the line. And then I have the path 
uh, geometry class, which is simply a wrapper. So it provides a get total length and get point at length um, functions from the SVG geometry class. I did this little wrapper because around the ski API, because here I'm using Expo and the contour measure API has slightly changed in, in Skia, so in a newer version of Skia. And also here we only have one contour, so a contour in the path in Skia is when the number, when the path closes or you move to another position, that's one contour. So we, um, we have a small wrapper so we can deal with a path with many contours. So really small wrapper along the Skia API. So to get, get total length and get point at length. Um, so back to this. So we have the transformation matrix, which is going to be fit rectangles. And so that gives us the matrix, which we can apply to the path. So we can do path transform the matrix. So much better. So now it fits nicely. And I can add a stroke to make it a bit more friendly. Stroke cap round, stroke join round. That starts to look good. And you see here what we can do is add some padding uh, horizontally. So I can just do with, let's say, minus 32. Mm. So it looks like I have it already. Okay. So, I mean, I'm going to use it directly, but I have a padding value, which actually, ah, okay, here is big because it's pre-transformation, 75. So that's why when I, I didn't see anything. And yeah, so we can just, we take the width height and we remove twice the padding. So let me just use this value directly. Okay, that looks good. So now let's draw the gradient. So we're going to calculate the lines. Uh, so first I'm going to create the geometry object. So new path geometry. And we pass the path as parameter. And we need to calculate the, so the total length we have. So it's get total length. And now we need to calculate the line. So we're going to create a tessellate function. So lines equals tessellate. We pass the geometry object to do the measurements. And we start at 0 and we end at total length. That's going to give us the lines. So let's do it. So the tessellate, let's see what copilot <laughs> suggests. That's not, that's not good. Uh, so the path geometry. And so T0, which is a number, and T1. We need the position of the path at these two positions. So we have. P0, which is get point at length, and P1, no, it's not get point at length, it's geo dot get point at length, so on the path. And, exp oh, yeah. Up. And, Did I, yeah, did a typo here. I'm not sure what's okay. And maybe okay, it doesn't seem to complain, but this ah yeah, we don't use it. Okay. Okay, so now we want to calculate the mid point. So we want T05. So T05, yeah, that's T1, T0 plus T1 divided by 2. And we want the position on the path here. And we want the position on the line. So between uh, the line that is described by P0 and P1. And we're going to compare uh, the distance between the two. So that's the position on the path for 
uh, the half of the length. And so we calculate P05, which would be this time get point at length. And between, so P0, P1, and the distance is T05. I think, I don't know, I'm, life, this should be correct. So now we want, yeah, so the distance between the two, and we're going to create a tolerance variable. So, you know, how much we tolerate the points to be a far, far apart. Let's take a big value, 10. So if the tolerance, see, if the distance is bigger than the tolerance, we're going to recursively um, invoke tes the test line function. If not, we're going to return the line data. So we return a line. Which is, uh, so we have P1, which is P0, P2, which is P1. Um, what else? What else? The length and the paint. So the length, so the, we want the current length because you're going to see later it's going to be useful to know how far we are on the total path. So here's the, it's called length. We're going to use T0. And we're going to calculate the paint. So we have a base paint. Um, so we're going to do base paint copy. And maybe set color. <laughs> Copilot is way too far ahead on the tutorial. Uh, Skia color white, let's say. And then we're going to interpolate the color. But this looks good. And if not, we return also an array, but yeah, we're going to invoke. So tessellate from the T0 to T05. So we subdivide in two, and then we're going to call it from T05 to T1. And uh, I guess Copilot is going to be yeah way ahead of us on this. But this actually looks kind of uh, correct. Maximum call stack size exceeded. So we are not stopping the tessellate function call. Um, I think because in this branch, so here we are not using, we're, we're using the middle position between the length, but that's not the middle anymore. We need to take in this branch, at least we need to take the middle position between these two points. Um, yeah, so for the path, here we think in absolute value, so we have the correct position for the path. But here that's not correct because we want the midpoint between the two. Um, so we would do 0, 05 times the distance between P0 and P1. That actually looks good. Let's draw the paths. Um, so we now should have the lines set properly. And so instead here of drawing the paths, we are gonna draw the lines and we're gonna use a custom drawing component because here we want to display only the lines which are part of the progress. So we are displaying a dynamic number of, um, of uh, lines and therefore we will use, uh, to animate it, we will use a custom drawing component so we can dynamically have uh, the number of lines we choose. So I'm going to create here. So I have my callback, which receives a Canva. And um, so I have my lines. So for each line, should be pretty straightforward. We do a draw line. So we do um, Canva draw line. Uh, no, almost correct. So we, I mean, let me do. So we have P1, P2. Yeah, we can extract all of these. And that would be P1.x, P1.y, P2. Yeah, and the paint. That looks good. That looks good. And you see here how the O has been, uh, it's just a straight line. And it's exactly the case we discussed before 
where the middle point matches the middle point of the so the middle point of the line matches the middle point of the path, but actually it doesn't describe the value of the path. And um, of course, one thing we can do here is to make a small tolerance. So here you see we have great fidelity. We can do even um, so one divided by pixel ratio, which would be style sheet uh, airlined with. So now we have like perfect fidelity, but um, just to show you, so if we go back to 10 here, I mean, there are many ways we can see if um, the middle point position is correct, but here simply we could add um, if, so the it's bigger than the tolerance and we could add a condition, no, or because here it's gonna go, it's gonna be false. But we can decide if, um, uh, what can we decide, for instance, uh, if the distance between P1 and P0 is smaller than, no, greater than, let's say, 40. So you see now, boom, so low fidelity, but it catches uh, the O. So we can add like binary conditions, look at the uh, tangent of the paths, many techniques uh, we can apply here. And, um, but we're actually, I mean, I can leave it, but we don't really need it. No, actually I'm gonna remove it, I think. Ah, oh, whatever, well, I can keep it. And here I can use uh, a style sheet, yeah, like with, okay. So now we can calculate, oh, let's do the progress. So um, that should be interesting. So first, if, so we, we want to calculate the total length, or let's call it uh, yeah, current length, which is uh, total length times progress dot current. And um, if the current length, and this is why we needed the current, the accumulated length is greater than the current length, we don't draw. So that actually looks good, but it's not perfect because we still need to apply the progress here. And you know, so to the last segment. Um, so I think here we're gonna apply, we're gonna create a progress value. Mm, let's call it I don't know current progress. I think that's terrible naming, but we're gonna clamp a value between zero one, and we're gonna do. Um, So the current length minus the length. And I am tempted to just apply, so to create a P3, which is gonna be a get point at length between P1 and P2. So between P1, P2, and so the length is current progress times distance of P1, P2. Let's have a look. So P3. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so now let's do the colors. We can do, so where are we? So here we can do a color interpolation. We can do even better because we might have like straight lines. Oh, you know what? Let's do one color maybe first. Let's and then we're going to switch a path so with with straight lines and we are going to use a, a linear gradient because. But here I think because there are so many points, we can just do a interpolate colors. And so the progress is t zero, so the current length, right? What we use as current length t zero. 
to the total length, which would be GO times, so get total length, the input range colors we have here. So we have color, I have a repeat function in case we want, I mean, we're, we're gonna take a look and I calculate the input range based on the array we give. Yeah, isn't that cool? Looks good. And uh, yeah, so I have like this little repeat function. I mean, here it's not useful, but I can re repeat the array two times. So you're gonna have, yeah, you see the gradient repeating itself as many times as you want. Uh, so this is fun. This is, so do we need a linear gradient? Yeah, I guess maybe it could be slightly better. Yeah, we can definitely feel actually that, uh, but we're gonna do it in a later step. But here is the fact that we use a, um, a discrete color, you, we can uh, definitely feel it. But let me show you maybe, <coughs> sorry, first another effect. So instead of using color interpolation, we're gonna use, select a color. So actually here, we have a value that goes from zero to one. So I'm tempted to do something like this times, so this is like a progress. So times, hmm, let me think. Let's try. I'm, I'm tempted to do many things, but um, so let's do colors and probably I need to wrap it into a skier color so to parse the color. And I want to do, so colors, we're gonna select a color, so we're gonna do a math round off. So I want to do progress times, so colors dot length minus one. Mm, okay, not uh, too exciting, but maybe if I, I'm not sure why he's, he's not happy here. Uh, okay. Um, but maybe if we repeat the array many times, I don't know, I can do 10 times. Okay, now it looks interesting. This looks cool. Yeah. So, Really, we can do like some fun. Oh, but we can even, yeah, there are, here you can do anything. I mean, um, we could do, yeah. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a linear gradient. We can do like many different things. And um, let me switch paths maybe to, so I have here the path which has the straight lines. Fun. And so what we can do, now instead of setting a color, we're gonna set a linear gradient. So we get the start color. So which would be, so the color interpolation we did. So that would be, so T, T0 divided colors, I think that, that's good. And um, the end color is gonna be the same. I have T1, yeah. T1 is, yeah, I think that's correct. Start position, so I think it's P0, P1. So we can do uh, gradient is Skia shader make linear gradient, so the start should be P0, P1, the colors we just calculated here, so start color and color, position we can set to null, and we can do paint set shader gradient. So here, yeah, we have a nice linear gradation, what I can do is to decrease the number of colors. Yeah, so really smooth, nice linear gradient. 
guys, I hope you enjoyed this example, a very simple and quite efficient way to uh, calculate the gradient along the path. But you saw that we can use this technique to do other kinds of effects. And we can use also different techniques to calculate this um, gradient along the path. So to deal with path geometry, there are so many interesting uh, mathematical tools we can use. In fact, if uh, please let me know in the comments if there are some other techniques you would like to see or you know you would like to show me how to, to do it because when researching the topic I found so many different uh, ways to, to solve this problem. It really all depends on um, basically you know the trade-offs of uh, you know what you, you are working with and um, you know how fast you know depending on the environment you're running the things you, you want things to be. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I am looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking.